there was a big challenge coming in as there's a big difference between an assistant coach and director of rugby so it was a bit daunting at first and um, I think after the first game when we played the Dragons all those years ago it was a lovely sunny day here we won with a bonus point so it was a nice start to the tenure um, I, I'd like to think that we've moved on you know um, in the brand of rugby we play um, attracting interest in the west of Ireland and building the brand of Connacht Rugby um, being involved in the Heineken Cup for the last two years has certainly helped and uh, we've had our two best finishes in the Rabo in, in year one and year two um, we're coming to the end of year three so all in all I think it's been um, fruitful on the pitch and off the pitch uh, a lot of people, people have contributed to that uh, management, staff, players um, the PGB so I'd like to think that the game has moved on in Connacht I think the interest has moved on I think people are proud of their team want to play for Connacht proud to wear their colours and thankfully we're um, getting a couple of guys recognition on the international team as well so when you add all those things up I think we've made a lot of progress it's been hard work but you know anything worth having in life is, is about hard work and uh, I'm not afraid of hard work and the good people I work with aren't afraid of hard work and the players have put their shoulder to the wheel and even with the rotation of players in and out of Connacht Rugby and there generally tends to be a lot every year be it 10, 12, 14, 16 but even with those changes and, and losing good players we recruit well and you know it's been good we're, we're making progress gradually um, personally I'd like to see it maybe accelerate a bit faster but you know there's obstacles in your way but as I say if people believe in what they're doing and continue to work hard we'll get better Regarding the, the, the development, we're, we're very proud of the academy and the work that they do with Nigel and Jimmy. Uh, the young lads have come forward. I mean, we have 19 Indigenous players in our senior squad. And a lot of those guys over the last two and a half years, to my promise, is that they're good enough, they're old enough, they get the opportunity, and they have done. Um, for continuity purposes, those guys are coming through um, and have done for the last three years, which is great. Uh, I think it's really important that we're able to hold on to our established um, senior players as well. Because that too will help us recruit the better um, players from other provinces or Irish qualified players abroad and hopefully attract good non-Irish eligible players. So I think it's, it's a combination and it's getting the balance of, of those four areas that will help you grow a team and uh, hopefully get consistency in your performances. I think th the main goal for us was to uh, be competitive, um, you know, not just in the sports ground but in, in, in away matches to gain that respect within the league that when you're playing Connacht it's not just about the wet and windy sports ground it's these guys can play I like the way they play and they're going to be competitive home and away and I think over the couple of years in the Rabo that we gained that respect we showed we were competitive but we also showed we were competitive in Europe against the good teams and I think that's, that's also a positive for Connacht in that in the Premier competition in Europe albeit it's only our second time but in the two, two years we've been involved we've We've taken a couple of scalps and we're continuing to build. Well, I suppose since the advent of the European Cup and the Heineken Cup, it's where everybody wants to be. Every team in Europe, every club team in Europe, that's where they want to be. It's a fantastic competition. It is a very high profile. And, um, you know, since the game went professional, it's something that everybody in Connacht, myself included as a, when I was a player, uh, all the players, all the coaching staff, the PGB, all our supporters, that's where everybody wants to be. And that's what you judge yourselves on. So when we got the opportunity last year to Leinster's endeavours, it was a great um, reward for, for us in that someone did us a favour and uh, we got the opportunity. The fact that we had the English champions and the French champions in our pool made it really, really attractive. Um, so your very first home Heineken Cup game against Toulouse was a fantastic uh, occasion here. And then to round it off in the manner in which we did uh, against Harlequins at home was great closure on our first campaign. It is frustrating that when you do so much in a game to get that close. But, you know, that's our responsibility as players and as coaches that, you know, we've got to be able to close out those games and either get it tactically right or we've got to make right decisions under pressure. And, you know, we had seven or eight last year. We have two or three already this year. But I think, you know, part of the reason we signed someone like Dan Parks was to give us that maturity, to give us that game sense and game management to be able to get us over the line. Now, we lost a couple of weeks ago narrowly against Edinburgh. But, you know, some days those kicks goes over and that's the nature of that. Some, some days you're the hero and some days you're the villain. But, you know, that's part of our development. That's part of our growing up. As much as it's a difficult, steep learning curve, that's just the nature. But um, we believe we still get there. We, you know, I kind of believe in what you do and uh, 
hopefully as we get older and mature together, hopefully we get um, better at closing out those games. Rugby has been my, and uh, Connacht rugby has been my life for the last 25 years. So when you're involved in something for that length of time, that decision and a decision like that doesn't come easy because it's a huge part of my life. And, you know, I had to talk, I had to think about it quite a lot. It wasn't a knee-jerk reaction to any specific incident. I spoke to my wife a few times. I spoke to a couple of good friends of mine who consider mentors and who I who rely on their opinion very much. And I spoke to my family. So, And, you know, the more I met those people and the more I gave them the, my, my reasons why, then I knew I made the right decision. The hardest decision for me was actually coming to that decision that I was going to walk away after such a long time. But I, I knew in my heart and I knew in my gut that it was the right decision. And when you're right in your heart and your gut that you've made that decision, then you're not going too far wrong. And as I said, of all the people I spoke to, family and friends, they didn't really try to talk me out of it once I expressed the reasons why. So then I knew it was right. So not an easy decision, but I'm happy in my heart now that it's the right one for me. It's quite um, publicly known now that, you know, that, as I say, I've got three young children now and um, I think it's about time that I give them a bit more time than I have been over the last couple of years, maybe, because the profession coach is, is a tough gig. Uh, this is a particularly tough gig for me because, obviously, I'm Galwegian and Connacht man through and through and I live in a bit of a goldfish bowl where it's 24-7 and, you know, it's rugby all day, every day, which is nice and... People are very friendly and it's nice for people to come over and say well done or hard luck and take a keen interest. But I think it's time now that I give something back to my family and re reintroduce myself to my wife and my three kids. And uh, I'm looking forward to that because uh, that's important to me as well. And you know, even though the rugby door is closing for a little bit, I'm hoping that another one may open. But um, time with family is important to me, so that's the right thing to do. It's 24-7 in the goldfish bowl, being scrutinised and it's difficult. You know, it's, it's, it's publicly known and difficult it is between resources and, um, you know, the, the players and the size of our squad. But that is the challenge that I've always relished. And the reason I took the job is because I care and I wanted to make a difference. And I, I think I can, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can stand up and say I've left in a, in a better place. And we certainly move forward and we've built on the good work that other people have done. And, and that makes me proud. I think it's important for the next man coming in that he understands the region. He understands um, the, 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 the coaching side of things in Connacht. That, um, you know, it's not the same as every, any other team. It's, it's, you know, it's hard work. Um, there's good, good, you're working with good people and it's, it's real hands-on coaching. And we've got a lot of young players here who are just sponges, who just want to be fed information. And I believe there's a lot of good young talent coming through. And, you know, once those young lads just recognise the opportunity that's in front of them, I mean, I think any coach is going to relish coming into that environment. You've got young, hungry players who, who just want to learn and who just want to uh, play rugby at the highest level. At the present moment, um, I, haven't spoke, I haven't thought about it too much. Um, it's always in the back of my head because I'm one of those individuals that I, I like to be a step ahead and I like to be organised and knowing what's in front of me. So because of uh, the, the European games and because of the, the derby matches over Christmas and we have a couple of more European games in January. I'm going to wait till this next block of games is finished. So come come January, February and join the Six Nations. And I'm going to have to sit down and maybe comprise a CV, something I haven't done in over 25 years. So, And, uh, you know, I'll have a serious look then about what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to take a break from rugby is my first instinct. But I will never say never if an opportunity arose or another door opens in, in the rugby, well then I'll have to address and assess that because uh, as I say I am passionate about it but for the moment I'm looking to take a break and uh, we'll see what happens in the new year. Oh, I'm looking forward to the time at home with my kids, I'm looking forward to having some of my weekends free maybe and play a little bit of golf but at the end of the day you know I'm, I, um, I embrace the professional area at the tenth of time that you know I still have to work and I've got to pay my bills so it's a case of uh, finding something that, that suits me I think. Um, something that can challenge me, but also having that time to do things at home and play golf and go to watch rugby matches where I'm not watching the opposition or analysing anybody and I can enjoy the match a little bit more.